Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to a game called Miss Fisher and the Deadly Maze. This is based on the TV series Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries, which again is based on the novel series of the same name, I think. Anyway, I really like the TV series, so obviously I had to get the game, and here we go. Episode 1. Oh, there's episode 2 also, apparently. Ooh, how nice. Murdoch Foyle, you have been found guilty of the willful murder of Janie Fisher. You are to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. Do you have any last words? I am not destined to die here, for I am the earthly incarnation of an Egyptian king. What? The prophecy requires one more sacrifice. Oh, I like the effect here. Soon night and day shall become one, and the tears of Isis will nourish the water lily. Friday Fisher, I know you're here. I'm sorry about your sister. It was you, Franny Fisher. It was supposed to be you. Oh yeah, Janie was her sister's name. I just love this music and I really like the opening credits. They look a lot like the credits in the TV series, so the visual style and, you know, all all around aesthetics of this game do look really, really nice. And yeah, the music is just awesome. Da, 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 da. Alright, several months later, Princess Theater. Are we in a theater now? I guess we are. Hello, love your dress. Are you ready, Jack? For the opera? I think I prefer getting shot at by felons. The night is still young. Oh no, wait, that's not how she talks. No, maybe, maybe it is. I. I'm not even going to try and imitate the real actress. That is just not going to happen. We have a few minutes before the show starts. Let's mingle. I'll note down anyone important we meet in my detective journal. Bling! Jack Robinson, this keen police detective, has worked with Franny on many cases. Okay, so apparently my journal is right... Um, behind my face. Let Prudence Stanley, Franny's ever-concerned aunt, fundraises and mixes with the right people. Okay. Detective journal, tap the journal button to read up on clues relevant to the current case. Uh, okay. Do we... Wait a minute, let's see. This is... The setting, main menu, exit to title, blah blah blah, return, thank you, and the people and locations, we don't have any people. No, no, wait. People, blah blah, and locations, Princess Theatre, famous theatre has been recently renovated. Okay. And that icon means talk. Alright. Well, let's talk to Aunt Prudence then. Franny, my dear, you made it. It's good to see you, Aunt Prudence. And you brought the detective inspector. You told me accessories. <laughs> I had such short notice. Okay, I need to lower the volume a little bit in my ears. He scrubs other nicely. Oh, yeah, let's take that one. He scrubs up rather nicely, doesn't he? Mr. Stanley. No, no, wait, that was Jack saying that. Sorry. Totally wrong, Royce. 
Mr. Stanley, Mrs. Stanley. Yeah, Mrs. Yeah, sorry. Never mind. It is enough that you're here. As I've been saying, one can't just donate money to the arts, one must be seen to support the arts. Speaking of patron of the arts, I must introduce you to Wilhelmina Winters, a fellow art patron, patron known by Aunt Prudence. Okay, hello, nice. Not sort. I saw her here a moment ago. Ah, oh, there's her secretary. They're never too far apart. And Mrs. Winter's secretary. They are never too far apart. Nice. Okay, talk. Who do I talk then? Let's talk to the secretary then. Friday, this is Miss Trulock, secretary of the Ladies' Auxiliary Committee. Please, call me Amelia. I don't really stand on ceremony. Uh huh. Sick. Oh, updated. Nice. Secretary of Ladies Oxford, welcome to blah blah blah. Yep. Amelia, dear, have you seen Wilhelmina? <gasps> oh, that's strange. Mrs. Winters was just here a moment ago. They're closing the doors. We better take our seats. When you're ready, Miss Fisher, examine the curtain and we can take our seats. Oh. Tap that thing to examine, then drag the cursor to the desired object. Tap again. Oh, so, okay. And. Okay. Ah, like that. Okay. Full structure! <laughs> Fruitless toil. I'm not going to sing these, especially since I do not have an opera voice. How long does this go for? About four hours. Five, if you include the intervals. Five hours. The war took less time. Shh. A long time later. To learn a fear, the stranger must teach me. Okay, I guess I did do that. Sorry. That was horrible. Is it over? Interval. Lemon squash, Friday. Champagne on Prudence. You know that. Yeah, okay, I think I'm just going to speak as Phryne with my own voice, with slightly more British accents, if, if I manage that. Ooh, there's Wilhelmina. Phryne, why don't you say hello? Okay, so let's talk to Mrs. Winters then. Wilhelmina, this is my niece Phryne. Phryne, this is... No need to introduce me, Stanley. Everyone knows who I am. Wilhelmina Winters, chair of the auxiliary and a board member of a benevolent, benevolent fund. Bling, fellow pod patron, and blah. Fisher, isn't it? The lady detective from the papers. I've been following your career. Oh, that terrible business with the foil, a fellow. Yes. <laughs> Can't say I approve. Introduce Jack, talk about your cure. Well, let's discuss the opera. I think that's the right thing to do here. I was hoping to introduce you both tonight. Franny has such a, a contribution to make in her own way, and all this murder business. No offense, dear, but it's hardly permanent. With the right guidance, I'm certain she could be trained to contribute more to uh, traditional courses. Aunt Prudence! <laughs> Unlikely. Excuse me, I have to speak to someone else. I am stuck up and... Yeah. Not the friendliest. Aunt Prudence. You and I are going to have words. See the effect there. Words. Strong words. Later. Come on, Jack. Time for the final act. Uh, do I want to talk to Jack? Okay, let's talk to Jack. 
It's hard to take a man with wings on his head seriously. Enjoying the opera. Our knees were touching. It's hard to take a man seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. You prefer a seriously hard man anyway. Jack, you said it, not me. <laughs> okay. So let's just double click and. Okay, there we go. Prepare for the horrendous opera mockery. The stage looks different. Who's that? That is. I have absolutely no idea. The searing spell pierces my heart. That's the warrior daughter of the god Wotan. He cursed her to fall asleep until true love's kiss. To like Sleeping Beauty, basically. Whom oh, can I call to help me? So what's his problem now? I thought he wasn't afraid of anything. He's never seen a woman before. He's experiencing fear for the first time. I know the feeling. Even later still. Now he kisses her, she wakes up, and together they go kill the gods. Awaken! Woo! Wondrous woman! No, <laughs> okay. Her warrior daughter is not awakening. Awaken! Nope. What's happening? I thought she was supposed to wake up. Stop! 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 Ugh, stop the show! There's something wrong. I think. I think she's dead. <gasps> dead! Mummy? What's happening? Lower the curtains. Um, and we have our murder case, murder at the opera. I'm sorry, Franny. It looks like our evening is at end. Okay. And the camera just doesn't handle my face again. <laughs> oh well. Oh, on the contrary, it's just beginning. I'm coming with you to the morgue. What else discovered on the stage? Maybe I should go and watch the. Check out the crime scene. The morgue of the Royal Woman's Hospital. When you're ready to visit the morgue, tap move and then tap the morgue. Okay. I want to examine the... The stage is now a crime scene. You have my word that nobody will be allowed near, until it, uh, uh, near it until your constables arrive. But can I... Can I examine anything else? Yeah, come on. Curtis, come on. Collins informs me that Mac is waiting at the morgue. Okay. Let's move. Fine, let's move then. New location, morgue. Mm-hmm. Royal Women's Hospital. Evening, Mac. This is hardly a, the appropriate attire for a morgue, Jack. I wasn't expecting a murder at the opera, Mac. I still have some initial preparations to make. When you're ready, talk to me and we can examine the body. Okay, Friday's friend, candidate, and me confidant, sorry, mentor, affectionately known as Mac, Dr. Elizabeth Macmillan. Okay, can we examine things? What can we examine? Body, sink, okay, now we can examine a lot of things. Tools, let's examine the body. Let's begin the examination. Mm-hmm. Pressed plate. No visible signs of trauma or injury. Here, help me remove this pressed plate. Bling. Not damaged. Okay. Uh huh. There is a, a stab wound to the heart. 
And a big one too. Died of a stab wound. There's nothing else of interest on the body. Well, hardly. Give me a moment to examine the wound for information on the murder weapon. Weapon is unknown. Tap deduce to combine two clues and reach a new conclusion. Uh huh. Can we have. Let's go on stage. First play now. Okay, so we miss one more clue. Not deducing anything right now. Is there a. a I find it odd that although the victim was stabbed, there's nothing on the breastplate. Sounds like you're onto something, Miss Fisher. We should deduce to find out more. Fine, let's deduce then. How do I do this? Can we deduce anything of this? The wound looks too large for a regular knife. Okay. Breastplate is not damaged. Injuries underneath the costume. Someone dressed her after the fact. Looks that way. Uh huh. The victim was not wearing the bracelet blade when murdered. Okay. Can we examine anything else? Sink. Mac is rigorous about cleanliness. Not all doctors are convinced, but she says it limits the spread of germs. Okay. Can we talk to. What now? Can you give us more information about the time of death? I'll perform an autopsy on... What was the victim's name? Blanc? Hello? Silox. Oh, Silcox. Helen Silcox. Hmm. Renowned opera singer. Miss Winters. Mrs. Winters. What are you doing here? This is police investigation into a murder. Perhaps a person of your standing would prefer. Trulock. Hand them the guarantee notice. I'm sorry about this, Detective Inspector. It's been side signed by the Deputy Commissioner himself. Guarantee? On what grounds? Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis? Here? Impossible. Hmm. Okay. What is this nonsense about quarantine? There's clearly been foul play. Go home, Miss Fisher. There's nothing for you to see or do here. Deputy Commissioner, what about... How did you get the police to argue to this sham? The deputy commissioner and I are good friends. What's about? What's this about tuberculosis? Mac would never let something like that happen. It's a precautionary measure. It may turn out to be nothing. I'm sure the police will let you know. This looks like a cover-up. Mm -hmm. Miss Winters is attempting to cover up the murder for unknown reasons, and we shall find out those reasons. Okay, this is ridiculous. I'm getting nowhere fast with Miss Winters. Can I examine something else? Still the body. No, uh, no use. Won't let me pass. She has this town under her thumb. Okay, let's talk to Jack. You can't support this, Jack. If I can pick and choose which rules to follow, that would make me... Me? Precisely. As a detective inspector, it is my duty to uphold the law. Even when the law is our speak! R speak? R I'm just gonna say R speak. Because that looks like that. <laughs> if you don't have faith in this decision, then have some faith in me. Always. We'll get to the bottom of this. This is unbelievable. I'm insulted. The police would doubt my diagnosis. Tuberculosis at my hospital. We'll short this out, Mac, don't you worry. 
My professional pride is at stake here. I run a tight ship. I don't want the public thinking my words are dangerous. I'm sure it will be fine. I'll take this up with the deputy commissioner in the morning. There's nothing we can do tonight. Go home, Miss Fisher. Fine. Fine. Miss Fisher, you're home early. The next morning. I love these, like, title cards. They're so cute. Adorable. The art style of this game is absolutely adorable. Fisher Residence. Good morning, miss. Franny's loyal companion and occasional fellow sleuth. I probably should change out of my kimono. Hmm. Should I choose the blue jacket or something else? Let's see what's in my wardrobe. Franny's wardrobe change outfits at any time by tapping the wardrobe button, then selecting an outfit to wear. Oh, okay, so the wardrobe button is also right behind my face. I'm wearing this silk robe with Japanese print. She knows blue and white coat, prefers for hosting former lovers or their wives. Best paired with... Mm -hmm. But do we have something else? Oh my god, there's so many clothes here! <gasps> I'm loving this. Okay, let's go with this one. Perfect to any type of morning or afternoon excursion, including high tea at Hotel Windsor. Yes. Come on, Dot. Time for some sleuthing. Let's catch up with Mac and the morgue. There's also the Princess Theater, miss. Mm -hmm. Has been recently renovated, and yes. Oh, that reminds me. I left something on the vanity that I thought you might need. Okay. Do... No? Can I... Haha! <laughs> vanity. Let's see what Dot has left for me. Ah, the invitation to the opera handwritten by Mrs. Winters. This could be useful. Thank you, Dot. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there's something else underneath the invitation. Golden dress piece. Part of elegantly beautiful golden gown. Gown, sorry. Oh, you can find pieces from more outfits hidden in locations. Find them all for a new outfit. Alright. Okay, do we have anything else here? Lamp, bed... Drawer. Nothing left there. Okay, I don't think there is anything really left here, but now it's not time for sleeping. Okay, fine. Let's go to the theater. Come on, Dot, let's go inside. What are you two doing here? We're investigating the murder of Miss Helen Silcox. I'm told the investigation is being handled directly by the Deputy Commissioner. Mrs. Winters doesn't want anyone talking to Maggie or James. Aha, uh -huh. there are Maggie and James then. Who are they? They, miss! James Ellery Hurst and Maggie Kettle, the other two performers. James found the body. It was all in the program. They must be inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, nobody is allowed in the theater on the strict orders from Mrs. Winters. Come on, Dot, we'll find another way. Let's try the morgue, Dot. Perhaps Mac has new information for us. But, Miss, what about the consumption outbreak everyone's talking about? That is bullshit, my dear. I wouldn't say that around Mac, Dot. Okay, fine, let's go to the morgue then. Hello! We'll just let ourselves in. Stop! Smat. I... Um... Um... 
How do you speak? I have no idea. Lactation? No. I'm, I'm sorry, miss, but, but I can't let anyone in inside the morgue. Yeah, especially you. Q is an honest, if naive, constable. He is married to Dot. And dotes on her. Oh, but these two are married, then? Okay. So this happens between the season two, no, three and the whatever is happening after that. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Hugh, you and I both know you're not going to stop me. Miss Fisher, please don't make this difficult. The deputy commissioner himself gave me these orders. He said I'd be fired if I let you in. I don't believe in extortion, Hugh. You can tell the commissioner to take his threats and... <gasps> Miss! Oh, very well, Dot. Are you two still not talking? What do you say we pay a visit to the detective inspector? Hmm, okay. Let's do just that, then. Hello, sirs. City South Police Station. Are you sure you won't come inside, Dot? If it's all the same to you, miss, I'd rather not. You can't avoid Hugh forever. I'm certain I'll talk to him later. Very well. Jack will have to keep me company for a while. Take care, miss. <laughs> okay, um... Examine. Tree... Officers, entrance. I don't know why they bother locking it, to be honest. Officers, I bet if I come back tomorrow, those two officers will still be standing there. If you want to solve a crime, sometimes you just have to do it yourself. Okay, can I talk to someone? Okay, Jack, let's talk to you. This is a disgrace. A young woman is dead. Speak of the devil. Hello, Jack. The deputy commissioner is more concerned about Mrs. Winter's social standing than the crime. Just this can be blind, Jack. Especially in this city. <coughs> I suggest a chat with Mrs. Winters. She's the key to all of this. My thoughts exactly. Shall we go together? Definitely. Bling, opulent home of Wilhelmina Winter, so let's go there then. Mrs. Winters, if you don't mind, I have a few questions about the murder. Jack, I've been assured by my friend, the deputy commissioner. This investigation will be handled quietly and without the press being involved. That's all I have to say on the matter. As I said, Jack... Justice is blind. I think there's another way to get what we want. Providing the police are willing to look the other way. Uh-huh. Miss Fisher, I hope you aren't planning something I'll regret later. Me? Oh, almost certainly. <laughs> then perhaps it's time for me to follow up some leads down at the station. Try not to get into too much trouble. Oh, I will always get into trouble. Jack certainly is in a hurry to get back to the station. Can we examine anything here? Tea set. Dot would be keen to serve tea in a lovely pot like this. Okay, this is just a gramophone fire fireplace. Is there anything there? Hmm. I value directness, Miss Fisher. If you have something to say, say it to me, not my fireplace. Okay, can I talk to you then? These visits of yours do not inspire one with confidence. I prefer to answer to the deputy commissioner. Fine. Are we breaking in? We might be breaking in. I like that. Mm-hmm. This should be the alley behind the theater. Hmm. Well, hello, laddie. I wonder who that was. 
Okay, let's examine poster, poster, dustbins, door, crates, window. Anything here? No. Let's see the window first. Okay. This window leads into the theater. I know Jack's been barred from entering, but what harm could I possibly do? Absolutely nothing. Okay, do we want to examine something else here? Poster for the film Bride of Babylon. Uh, what's this door then? It looks new, but there's no markings or signage to indicate what goes on behind it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, that might be an interesting detail. Let's go to the dressing room then. Mm hmm Okay. I made it inside. Hmm. Hello, mister. Where is it? It's James. He hasn't noticed me yet. I should hide. Whoosh! I'm totally hiding in the shadows. What is James searching for? James Ellery Hurst was on stage with Helen when she was found dead. He seems unusually interested in the lavender envelope on the dressing table. Bling! Okay, there's something there. It's empty. Where's the letter? Where is it? Okay, now I don't know how that guy speaks, because I gave him this voice earlier on. Okay, let's examine everything, starting with the envelope. I can't really see much from here. Perhaps I should introduce myself to James. Uh, uh, no, not yet, I don't... Wait, hello. Helmets. Oh, oh, I, I, I do have to introduce myself. Fine. Hello. Hello. Ah! Who are you? Franny Fisher, lady detective. You're James Ellery Hurst, the singer from last night, aren't you? Detective, what are you doing here? Detecting. I was enjoying your perf performance until your co-star turned up dead. This is her dressing room, isn't it? I didn't kill Helen, and I'll fight anyone who says I did. Because I'm dramatic and such. Uh, why are you here? James. I'm looking for a letter. It has nothing to do with the murder, though. Completely innocent letter, that is. Nothing to do with at all. But it's not here. Gah! The envelope is empty. Mrs. Winters is going to be furious with me. Mrs. Winters? She's the one who wanted me to find it. Hmm. Mrs. Winters was trying to keep its existence a secret. What's in that envelope? That's just it. Nothing's inside. What about the letter? I don't know anything about it. I don't. All I know is that Mrs. Winters asked me to bring it to her. What's Mrs. Winters trying to hide? Wait, why am I answering your questions? Because you're a nice boy, that's why. You're not even supposed to be here. Neither are you, I suspect. <laughs> Fine, if you won't leave, then help me find the missing letter. A reasonable compromise. You let me know if you find the letter, letter right. Of course. Absolutely. Okay, now can we examine the things? Chest. Woman's undergarments. Not very adventurous, if you ask me. Uh, I've been looking for this. What did you find? Oh, I found another piece of the golden gown. That's nice. It's not in there either. Not that I've searched through women's undergarments. Oh no, not at all. Okay. Helmet. One of the horns is broken on this helmet. 
Helen used to joke that our props and costumes are sold. They built the theater around them. Okay. Mirror. Hmm, that lock is, is hanging in a pride of a pride of a place on the mirror. I wouldn't go touching Helen's personal effects if I were you, Mrs. Fisher. Miss Fisher. Is that a threat? I wonder whose picture Helen has inside. Have some respect for the dead. No, no, I won't. Photo. I guess it must be an actor who used to perform here. She was Helen's inspiration. Mm hmm. You are. Mm. What's the word? Coach, hello. A woman's coat. It was Helen's. Interrupting my examinations here. This is pointless. The letter isn't here. I suspect you might be right. I'd better go soon. I shouldn't be here, and I don't think you should either. Don't go too far, James. I'm sure I'll want to find you again. Whatever Mrs. Winters is hiding, it must be in the letter. Seems like I finally found the first lead on the case. We just need to find that letter. I wonder if Jack's found anything, but I still want to examine things. Envelope? It's a lavender envelope. Mrs. Winters seems determined to obtain it. Anything in the makeup? Stage makeup? Little strong for the wear? Yes. Uh, but drawers? Odds and bobs, nothing interesting. Oh, seriously? Nothing? Costumes? Anything there? Up close you can see how threadbare some of these costumes truly are. Wait, isn't that my favorite shawl? How did it get here? I'm part of an intricate dancing outfit. You are asking very good questions. Anything there? Assortments of stage jewelry and makeup. Nothing a thief would be interested in. Vanity itself is chipped and worn. Reminds me of Montparnasse. Oh, this is perfect. Oh. Did you just nick some jewelry, miss? Fine. We shall move and I guess I'll get back to the police station then. Where were you? Never mind. It's probably best not to ask. Okay, let's talk to you, mister. Mrs. Winters is definitely hiding something, Jack. She sent James into Helen's dressing room to fetch this envelope, but the letter inside is missing. You think whatever was in that envelope could tell us the full story? I'm hoping. Very well. If you're about to do what I think you're about to do, I would like to come along. I expect nothing less. Wait, what am I about to do then? Is there anything to examine here? Car. Oh, Daimler. 35 HP model, if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful engine too. Wasted on the police. Okay then, well, um... Hmm? Mrs. Winters? There's something burning there. We're coming in. See that? Hmm. <laughs> no one seems to be about. And yet the door was wide open. Too good an opportunity to miss, Jack. I saw that. There's something there. Jack, over here. I think I see something in the ashes. Splat! What are you doing? I don't appreciate the police coming into the front door, detective. Inspector? Should I have come alone? <laughs> okay, let's talk. Mrs. Winters. Jack! With all due respect, I don't answer to the members of general public. Do you mean me? Mrs. Winters, it would help my investigation if you would answer some questions. I assure you, there's no one I trust more than Miss Fisher to uncover the truth of the matter. I'm sure you're interested in finding out who murdered that poor girl. <laughs> who do you suspect? Let's start with that. 
One of Helen's colleagues, perhaps? You can't seriously be suggesting that Maggie or Jane... No. Okay, I just asked that in a wrong... Wrong voice, sorry. You can't seriously be suggesting that Maggie or James had something to do with this. They are two upstanding young performers. The best our conservatorium has ever produced. I won't allow you to sully their reputations. <laughs> Is this lavender envelope familiar to you? Where did you get that? Let me just open this. That's personal correspondence. Please. It's empty anyway. The missing letter seems of Im great importance to you. It's unrelated to the murder, I assure you. Mm-hmm. How do we know that? You're not suggesting that I... It would help us rule you out. You have been making this investigation unnecessarily difficult. Reputations are at stake here, Jack. Yours? Yes! I've come too far to lose it all because of one murder. <gasps> Also, this is killing my voice eventually. I can promise you a level of discretion not even the police can provide. Really? Discretion guaranteed. Besides, if you don't find the murderer soon, the story could blow up, up in unexpected ways. Then nobody's reputation will be safe. I suppose if you promise to keep the press out of it. Okay, yeah, of course I promise about the murder. Do you recall anything out of the ordinary last night? At the theater? Yes. Certainly not. Nothing at all that would suggest Helen's life was in danger. No. Although... Yes? James and Helen were having a heated conversation before the show. Bling! Without the access to the body and the scene of the crime, it might be difficult to solve the crime. There's no need to be around a bush, Fisher. Hmm, where is she going? It looks like Mrs. Winters is making a phone call. Maybe I should eavesdrop? We could learn something interesting. Miss Fisher. Jack's voice keeps changing all the time. Sorry. Suit yourself. Wait here while I... Oh, you're back, Mrs. Winters. It is done. I recommend it to the Deputy Commissioner to resign the quarantine order. We'll have access to the body and the scene of crime. That's excellent news. However, it might take some time for the order to propagate. Bureaucracy. Oh, goodbye. Fine. That's all for now, Mrs. Winters. If we have further questions, we know where to find you. Hmm, very well. I'm sure you can appreciate I'm too busy to show you the way out. There's no shortage of work at my desk either. Miss Fisher, I'll be heading back to the station. Then this is where we part company, Jack. I have Aunt Prudence coming over for tea. I want to see if she remembers anything else from the last night. Very well. Take care of yourself, Miss Fisher. Whoosh. I just love the animation there. Okay, so does that mean that I need to... Sorry. Herbs. I have to go home. Plonk. Dot, is Aunt Prudence here yet? I'm here, Franny. Oh, hello, Aunt. <laughs> oh, my dear. Terrible business at the opera. Okay, let's talk about it. Did you see anything amiss last night, Aunt Prudence? What? No, not a thing. Goodness, I suppose the dead happened while I suppose the deed happened while we were all there. How ghoulish. 
Why do you say that? I don't know. Oh wait, I remember now. What do you remember? It was the night of the murder. I was at the theater early, as usual. I saw Helen, that poor unfortunate creature. She arrived at the theater a few minutes before the performance bell rang. A few minutes before the bell rang? Are you certain, Aunt Prudence? Yes! I only saw her for a moment, though. She must have gone backstage. Immediately after that, you and Jack arrived, arrived at the theater. So the victims were live at the theater just before the opera started. Good to know. Mm hmm. You will see justice done, won't you, my dear? You're so terribly good at this sort of thing. I will do my best. I wonder if I have access to the body and scene of crime now. Okay, well. I think I'm going to leave this episode of Miss Fisher and the Deadly Maze right here. This looks interesting. I love the art style and I do love the music. So, I will be playing more of this whether you like it or not. Thank you so much for watching this. If you did like it, let me know. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you again next time.